Let's take a closer look at a small but very interesting detail on today's Formula 1 cars. The aero shape bump in the headrest, which most teams are using. So why is it there and how does it make the car faster? First of all, the monocoque of an F1 car has a mandatory opening for the cockpit. The headrest is a separate piece which is mounted to the car after the driver is sitting inside. It is a light carbon Kevlar frame with three different grades of foam depending on the ambient temperature of the race. So race control is telling teams which foam to use for the weekend to have the best softness in case of a crash. Aerodynamically, the headrest is a fully integrated part which closes the gap between helmet and monocoque, so less cockpit losses spill out. The gap is closed so much that during seat fitting the hands of the drivers are measured to create a large enough pocket so they are able to steer. The back of the headrest is designed in a way to adapt to the spoiler or wing on the driver's helmet, so there are less separations. The part above the shoulders is rounded to create a gentle transition to the rearward bodywork. The difference between development and the real car is that the driver's helmet is not in a fixed position and moving while driving. So teams watch the helmet's position during a race and implement the different positions in their simulations. One thing teams realized was that if the helmet is leaning against the sidewall of the headrest, for example under high g-force when the driver is tired at the end of a race, the airflow at the side is pretty much blocked and creates a relatively big separation bubble which flows downstream to the back where it hits downforce producing parts. In other words, if the driver is tired and leans his helmet against the headrest sidewall, he is losing downforce. To avoid that and to ensure a large enough gap between helmet and headrest, teams designed a spacer. Of course, because it's in the airflow, it needs to have an aerodynamic shape. So with this spacer, the helmet can never get too close to the sidewall and teams can avoid a large separation bubble. On the other hand, the helmet's position can move in a much smaller range and this is helping with correlation between CFD and track. It's just a small detail, but in F1, details matter. So I hope you liked this little insight and see you at the next video.